In this video, we will build a simple to-do list with .NET Core and Redis JSON. What is Redis JSON? Redis JSON is a high-performance NoSQL document store, which means it's similar to MongoDB. It provides all the functionality of MongoDB and uh, also some extra features and also is uh, a very high-performance database. So let's uh, get started. Redis currently is running a promotion and you have a chance to win a Tesla. So to uh, have this chance, go to this link redis.info slash Antonio. I will provide this link in the description of this video. Use this code, you get also $200 in free credits and also a chance to win a Tesla. Now I will sign in with my account. So I logged in and now I will create a new subscription, a free plan here. AWS, I will select uh, Europe and the uh, subscription name, I will call it database and I will create this subscription. And here I will create a new database, I will call it Redis DB. And the modules here will be Redis Search and Redis JSON. Redis Search is a module that provides functionality just like Elasticsearch. So you may want to check also Redis Search and how it works. And now uh, I will simply activate the database. And while this is being created, let's uh, uh, create the frontend. And the frontend is already been made. So I will just copy this uh, GitHub link here. And I will open the terminal and run git clone this frontend. So I'll go inside the uh, Redis frontend and run npm install. While this is uh, installed, I think. Uh, this is completed, so we have a public endpoint here with a port and uh, we will use uh, this uh, in our .NET app to connect with this database. Now npm is installed, run npm start and uh, the frontend will run. We will have an error now because uh, we haven't built the backend, so we need this uh, endpoint for the front end to work so let's uh, build uh, the uh, I'll open a new tab here and uh, let's uh, create uh, the backend I will uh, make a new directory I'll call it dot net uh, redis I will go to that directory and uh, here I will run dot net new web API so this is created and now I will open it with my IDE. So it is open now. Let's make some changes. I will uh, remove this uh, weather uh, forecast here and in the controller I will remove also this. And in the controllers I will create a new controller here. I will call it Redis controller. So here uh, let's make this uh, an API controller and uh, for the index here we will return uh, all uh, so for the moment let's return an empty array uh, let's uh, add here an HTTP get method to tasks so here I'm trying to recreate this uh, HTTP localhost port 8000 slash tasks. So this is uh, the endpoint that is failing the front end. And uh, I added a get method to tasks here. Here I will simply return OK new array list. And uh, we will simply return an empty array. So that should be it. Uh, let's uh, go also to launch settings uh, because uh, here is the port 5000 and uh, our frontend requires the port 8000. So uh, the port should be 8000 here. And uh, we should uh, 
this should work but uh, it won't so let me run dot uh, net watch run here uh, it won't work because uh, in the startup we had have to add cores here which uh, we will do it now so i will close the other tabs and i will inspect here if uh, we refresh we will have an error because uh, we have a course problem course error we can see here so course is happening because our front end will run on port 3000 and our back end will, will run on port 8000 and uh, that uh, is not uh, accepted by the browser we have to add this configuration here up use course and we have to pass some options so the options will have uh, with origins this ac accepts a new array of strings and uh, I will add here our frontend so I'll copy this URL and paste it here and uh, I will add here allow any header and uh, allow any method so this is uh, what uh, we missed and with this uh, it will work so let's see I will refresh now and we see a tasks list here now we don't want to return uh, an empty array here instead uh, we want to return from this uh, redis database and to do that we have to install a package redisom.net so this is a package that uh, can map uh, documents that we will create in our app uh, with uh, the redis cloud so to install it i'll copy this code here and uh, i will run it here .net add package redis om and uh, we will watch run again so we we installed uh, that package and uh, this is how we will use it so first i have to create a document so i will create here a folder uh, where is uh, the directory i'll call it document documents so inside i will create a class i'll call it task so i created the task uh, class here i will add the decorator here which is doc document so using redis om modeling this is a document and uh, the fields uh, that uh, the task will have are public string name let's add a getter here and the setter and uh, the same will be for the other field which is a boolean and this is a complete field we also need uh, another field which is uh, the id but the id we need to add here that this is a redis id field so redis will know that the id is uh, this value here and that's it so we created uh, this task and now in the redis controller let's add the constructor so public redis controller and inside we will create the connection with uh, the redis cloud i'll create here a public variable so public uh, redis connection provider i'll call it provider with underscore provider and uh, don't forget also to import uh, using redis om here and uh, the provider is equal to a new redis connection provider and uh, here we will specify the string that we we need to connect with this redis cloud so we need this public endpoint i'll copy this 
paste it here but this is uh, not enough we need to add the protocol which is redis so the first is uh, the protocol so redis column slash slash uh, this uh, url that we copied we also need the password so we have a default user password here which is this one we need to copy this also and we have to add another column here the password and add so not sure if you got it so we need first the protocol then we need uh, a column here because uh, this is a default user we don't have to put a user here this is a password at and uh, this is the url the public url that we got here on top and with this it will work uh, fine so now instead of returning a new array list let's return all the tasks so var tasks is equal to provider uh, redis collection of task so we will get uh, the tasks and uh, this is how we get them and in the end we will return the tasks and that should uh, be it so if we save this let's see we, if we have any errors we don't we refresh here and everything is working fine now we still are getting an empty array because uh, we don't have any tasks so to create a new task let's uh, uh, I'll copy this paste it here and this is HTTP POST and this is CREATE so let's create a task here so when we send the values we'll send uh, a task in the body task task like this and uh, when we first create a task the complete field should be false so task complete is equal to false and uh, to save this task now we run provider connection set this task and that should be it in the end we will get uh, a value and this will be the id so let's return the id so i'll save this and uh, let's uh, see it so i will also inspect here because uh, we want to see what is the value so let's create a test task add it it was created successfully and this is uh, the format that we got so i'll copy this because we will use it later and uh, the id it will be like uh, this so i stored it here because uh, there is something that uh, we need to change and uh, this will help so uh, we successfully created the task and uh, it doesn't work here in the react uh, app because we need to return the task itself not the id so instead i will return here the task and uh, if uh, we refresh we should uh, probably see the list of tasks uh, we have this problem and this can be solved by adding this uh, provider connection create uh, index so i will add it here but this should be executed only once so task here we need to create an index and if we refresh we will get uh, our task test tasks but uh, if we refresh again we will have an error so the index already exists so the second time i will comment it actually the second time we don't need to run it so we successfully created uh, a task here let's create another one and uh, this will be added uh, 
immediately because uh, we return directly the task here and uh, now we want to update this task so we want to uh, check here and uh, this uh, when we refresh we need to be checked so let's add an update function so let's uh, make a public i action result update and uh, this uh, will be an http put to tasks slash the id of the task and uh, we will pass the id here so string id and also we will send uh, only the complete field but uh, i will send directly the task so i don't want to create any dto or something so i will keep it short uh, but uh, here we want to use uh, the name so instead of updating i will do something i will get the task uh, based on this id so var task i'll change the name here to just body so don't get confused with this and this and uh, to get uh, the task is uh, like this so the provider connection uh, get the task that we want based on this id so i'll put the id here and uh, in the end uh, i will return uh, okay the task so we want to get the task with uh, this id let's see if it works and uh, i will inspect now i will put it uh, on the right side and uh, let's check here and we send this endpoint but uh, we don't get the task so what is the reason so we send this id so this part here and uh, we try to get the task but uh, we don't uh, get the task so the reason is uh, that's why i put uh, this value if we put uh, the whole value it will work so i saved this and uh, i'll check again and now we got here the whole value so in order to get the task we have to do it like uh, this we will send an id but uh, the key name here will be the type of task plus a column plus the id and uh, that should be it so that's why i saved this and uh, with this now if i check again we will get here the object so now let's update it and updating it is really simple simply the task now complete it it will be equal to body complete so we will get the value from the body and uh, in the end uh, we will uh, save it so task not task provider connection uh, set this task and we will return it so that's it now i will refresh i'll check uh, this uh, task number two and if i refresh again this task number two it is selected and if i change it if i do it like this we will get uh, the first one so the order has changed but uh, it's working fine so the last part now is removing these tasks so let's add the last endpoint which is public i action result delete and here we will get uh, the id also this will be an http delete and uh, to delete uh, a task we run here provider connection unlink this uh, id 
and uh, that should be it return ok null here so we don't return anything so let's uh, try to delete the task number two it was removed and if we refresh we can see it was uh, removed so that's it this is how we create a CRUD functionality with .NET Core and Redis JSON. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.